CLD is uh, the name that I used when I started my business in 1993, custom leather tie. Yeah. I've been coming here eight years, every day, except when I take my little vacation. 22 years in the little shop uh, just across the street, and eight years on this location. I've been in business for 30 years, so uh, I've been lucky that I have repeat customers. And uh, hey, I survived COVID, so that says a lot about the business. Yeah, walk around the house and see how it feels. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You take care. Cobblers or shoe repairmen, it's a dying art. A lot of businesses are closing and people are retiring, nobody takes over the shop, so we're, uh, as time goes by, less and less of us. So I guess we're like becoming like the dinosaurs of, of, of the, you know, unrepaired jobs. But uh, a lot of stuff is necessary to do, purses, luggage, someone has to fix them, so very few people getting into the train now. All set. So this is where I started making my business. This machine is the one that really money making machine. It's just a finish, a sand, I mean it's a, a brushes to shine shoes but my work was dying shoes so I use it a lot. And because of that machine I got the rest of it. You know so they asked me to sell it sometime, I said I refuse to, I don't know what I'm going to do when I die. <laughs> I just don't want to let it go, you know. But um, because of that machine, I kept uh, working and buying one machine after another. Finally, I got, when the time came, I got the very top equipment that a shoe shop could have, which is that one there. Sanders. Let's see. to do my credit my manicure. Also has the trimmer. This has it for the main patio. This tiny cap here is when you flip on the trimmer. That's this one. And it also has eight different trimmers for different soles. This one here, let me throw this one. You have to make the channel on the phone. So make the channel and from this we go to the other machine to do the stitching on the channel. So this this equipment is the best there is really and it has a set of brushes also so we have three sets of uh, brushes that do the work that that one does but i'm not using it so that's why they look so dirty but this machine is top of, it, was, it has a, a history i went to a shoe shop a show to see the equipment and I planned to buy one that was very kind of like this only but they had this on display and I was so lucky that the guy they had repositioned it from the previous buyer plus they didn't want to take it back to Chicago where or Atlanta where is the base of the company they didn't want to take it back so they wanted to get rid of it so I was there and I took the I was lucky I guess I I just got it plus I didn't get it for you know full price. I got it on a very discounted price 
from Stanley Bostich and also some credit. So that helps a lot. And after that, working for the stores on the mall, doing the dive work for them, kept me alive for a long time. So I managed to establish my business after 10 years when I came in, in 83 to the States. And then 10 years later, I have my own shop. So uh, ever since, so today is 2023, 30 years with my own shop. I wanna get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. My dad was, uh, he had a factory in El Salvador. So I never worked there, but uh, from looking at the guys working, uh, I mean, it was in the blood. So when I graduated high school down there, when I was like 16 years old, two years before, because uh, the reason was I had an uncle that was a military. And when I was like four years old, he grabbed me and teach me to read and write, you know? So, uh, but when I was four, I already knew how to read and write. So they put me into first grade. So uh, all through school, I was two years ahead. So I graduated, I was supposed to graduate at 18, but I get off 16. So I had to go after high school to the university. But at the time we had a civil war going on really heavy in El Salvador, so uh the university was closed so i wouldn't be able to go to school and by not going to school i'd be recruited by the army or the guerrillas and neither one of them was my goal so i say no nope. i told my dad you know what i'm leaving and he said no you're not so i argued with him and i told him well then you choose you know La semana pasada buscamos un grupo de guerrilleros y José Puta y yo fui el que los apresó con esta. A ustedes ya me lo les toca porque están reclutando a todos, ¿eh? Temo. ¿Temo qué? Morales, Morales. A la fila. Pero si solo tiene 10 años, es injusto. ¿Cómo pueden hacerle esto? ¡Temo! ¡Sargento! ¡Temo! ¡Sargento! Roberto Olsen. Siga. Van a ser soldados como nosotros. Van a defender a la patria. Yo no me quiero ir a los Estados Unidos. Pero si me quedo, me van a acabar matando. Pero voy a regresar. I came to Mexico with a visa because he got me a passport, got a visa to Mexico. But when I came to the state, I went to the border. You know, I was uh, illegal. Mm -hmm. So I came here, I didn't have mom or dad to support me, so I had to work. And uh, on the radio, I listened to some uh, advertising that they needed a shoe repairman in North Hollywood, so I went in. And because, I mean, even though I never worked, I, I knew about shoes. So yeah, I started working in there and I, I stayed working with that guy for about uh, about six to eight months. The first payment was sixty dollars a week, you know, then seventy, then eighty, until after like six seven months, it was like one hundred and sixty dollars. So, but uh, he teach he taught me how to do dye work, you know, changing color on leather. So this guy was like 
I really became good at it, you know. And, and uh, then after like six, seven months, they were offering a job here at the Delamo Mall in Torrance, and I came to try. And that's another history that is pretty. Uh, I didn't. I had never been in the area of Torrance, and I've been like seven. I was only seventeen years, seventeen and a half, somewhere in there. And I went downtown, grab a, a, a bus, and, and the bus took me to Carson. And, and then from Carson, Torrance was pretty far, so and I didn't know the area. So, so what happened was, I called a cab. And I only have like fifteen bucks with me. You know, so what happened was uh, I took a cab, it took me to the spot, and I went there, and it was a holiday. So there was no bus. The bus was running like there, it took forever for a bus to. But anyway, so I got there, and the guy asked me to do uh, a color for a suitcase, the owner. So what I did was uh, look at all the jars, grab one, add three drops of red, shake it, and hey, here we go. And he'd say, ah, oh, looks good. So the the shop was closed at the time because it was a holiday. He just show up for, you know, to interview me. So he offered me 20 bucks, you, you know, and I didn't took him because, oh, but the thing was that the taxi driver, I just saw the, you know, the charge on the taxi. He got to 11 bucks and I only have 15. So I give him the 15 bucks. So I end up with zero in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. But I have the 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 bus pass with of students because the same day that I started going to going to work in North Hollywood, the same day I started, you know, night school in downtown LA. So from North Hollywood I took the bus, got me to Beverly Boulevard, walked to the to this high school program. Actually, it was ESL. So I was going to school all the time that I was, that since I started to work the same day. And uh, I had this, the bus pass, you know, no money with me, but I had the bus pass. So I went across <clears throat> to Hawthorne Boulevard, waiting for the bus. The bus didn't show up. So I started walking. I said, I'm going by all the way there. But then I saw the bus coming, so I ran to the next bus and boom, it took me downtown. So that was safe. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, it took like two weeks and they called me to come and work here. And I did. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I told the guy that I wasn't going to work no more. They offered me a raise, but I said, no, I wanted to try somewhere else. So I came here and I didn't know how much they were going to pay me. So my surprise was at the time, 250 bucks was, was good money. Uh, comparing to 160, uh, you know, so yeah, so I came to start working here in, in Torrance, and mm, ever since been in Torrance. Just that work, that was my specialty, yeah, and that's why I started the business because uh, from that store. In the Delamo Mall, we used to do the dye work for Nordstrom, the stores in, you know, big company. So next to Nordstrom on the Sabe Galleria, there was a shoe whisk shop. So they found out that I was doing the dye work for Nordstrom. So that's how they contacted me and asked me to do the dye work for the company. So, yeah, it was, it was a big company. It was a big company. So there was a time that they quit work, uh, they, they quit my work. Because uh, a company, after like six years, a company show up from Houston that they did computer side, uh, color matching and blah, blah, blah. And so they went in there, they went to Houston, you know, with that company and try them, but uh, it didn't work. All these managers of the store were asking me to fix the stuff that the other company messed up. So I did the favor to the ones two, three times at the closer, the one in the South Bay Galleria and the Carson Mall. But then I say, no, you know, just send them back to them. You know, and by the time, I guess all the managers were complaining and the owner of the company asked me to do the dye work again. So, yeah, so that was... Well, the guy that, uh, the guy that uh, taught me how to do the dye work, uh, 
he was a very, I mean, he was a master also. He was a really good shoeman. And uh, he focused in with me to do the dive work. And, and, you know, Lorenzo is his name. So one day I did some color matching for a wedding. And I showed him the, the piece that I had dived before in the color. And he said, eh, add, add some red to it. So I went back to the working area and I didn't do anything. I just went back to him with the same color that I showed him before. And then he went perfect, you know, thinking that I have done what he had told me to do, you know, but I knew it was good. So you know, if I had put anything else, it would have messed up the color. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's the way it works. You know, sometimes the student gets better than the teacher. So I think that was the case. When we started doing dye work, it was mostly uh, petroleum-based dyes and sprays. So they were really, I used a lot of lacquer thinners and, and chemicals that are very bad. So all my youth I used, that's what I used. Then suddenly they changed to water-based uh, acrylic color and it, it got better you know, for our health also. Yeah, yeah, we use uh, airbrush. And that's how we dye the shoes now. They're pretty good. I like it. Yeah, so. But yeah, the, the beginning was bad, very bad. I mean, petroleum base, you have to smell all this. Yeah, it's like when you're painting cars, you know, the smell of that oil base. Uh, plus, it's very thin, so it's more uh, kind of uh, small. And you can breathe it, and it goes very fast into your lungs. So, yeah, that's, that's how the dyes are. We do also repair bags, handbags, luggage, uh, any, like right now, camera cases. We, I do a lot of it, but I enjoy mostly, really, the, the orthopedic stuff. Ready to go to Vegas. I went to school and became a certified pedortist to work on orthopedic. Well, I used to do a lot of orthopedic modification also for some podiatrists, but then I have a situation myself when I had a, a foot problem, got a cortisone shot. And from that, uh, they gave me a pair of orthotics that were very rigid and I thought, what the hell is this? You know, it's too hard. But he said, that's what I needed. So I tried him and he solved my issues. So I went to school and became a pedortist so I could manufacture the custom orthotics also. Actually, this is the first, from working on my feet all day long, you know, I got, uh, uh, I got a pain on my heel area. So I, I found out it was uh, plantar fasciitis. So I used, I did a lot of work for doctors, podiatrists especially, so building up shoes to customize them. Sometimes when people have polio, they have one leg shorter than the other, so we modify the shoes so they can walk better. And I got into this situation in which I had a heel pain. So I went to one of the doctors that I work for and he put me a cortisone shot that hurts like, you know. <laughs> and he said, we might put you another one later on. And I say to him, no, one is enough. So then he made this orthotic for me. He, when I got this orthotic, my surprise was that this is hard. So I told the doctor, hey, listen, this is too hard. He said, that's what you need. You know, what you need is, and then he explained that the te I had a tear on these tendons. So in order for this to heal, I needed a support so this won't stretch. And by not stretching, will allow the ligament to, to heal. And this, I also had to do some exercises to roll the foot on a bowl or on a glass water to push the blood flow inside this area. That way, it, with time, it will heal. So I wore this for a while and really did solve my issue. So when I realized that was, you know, something that really worked, I went to school and became a, a pedortist. So 
I can do now the custom orthotics. We take the imprint uh, of uh, the foot on a box. Oh, let me just pick up one here. Hold on. See. We take the cast of the foot and then make the form on with the, uh, like, yeah. We make the, 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 the form on, on a plaster. And from that, we do all the modifications that are necessary to do the orthotics. This one's here. I became a certified pedortist and work with people that have diabetes or people that have uh, polio. We put different orthotics, especially made for them. So we take the cast of their foot like this, or we take the cast of the foot like this on an impression box. So from this, we make the orthotics. This is that's what. So we modify them so to adjust to whatever issues the patient have. So that's one of the things that uh, in my line of business I I went into it when to to I mean, help people when they have foot issues. She has both feet amputated, the toe area, so he don't have the ability to bend, to do the walkout, you know, toe off. So we put a carbide uh, plate so the foot won't bend, because he don't have the, the push-up. You know, without it, then he won't be able to do the strength to do the step. With this, he will because this will help. Now there is resistance to the floor. So we managed, we did this one and then he has his, his knuckles like calluses because of the pressure that he put. So we put uh, some cushion pads on those on the fifth and the first toe. On med pads, I should say. And then do the insert for the shoe, put the plate. So he can go party again. It's ready. And then on also on this one, we put in a, because he cannot do the, what we usually do with our feet, the dorsiflexion, um, the plantar flexion of the foot, with this guy doesn't have that ability. So we put a med bar to help him rock. See? Without it, he's like, I'm stuck. His back is like. So we should be glad we got our fit. <laughs> we don't put attention to it until it's too late sometimes. And especially people with diabetics, they have, they have to be extra careful. See, now, now the shoe rocks. His back won't be taking the pressure to do the step. Now because now he's like... Tiny little details. But we don't put attention to them until we don't have them. So. It's all set. It's ready. They're raw. These are stretching. Oh. Fancy, huh? Mm. See how it works. This is stretch of the front, the toe area, the width of the shoe, and this part here is the back. Stretch the length. 
keep going until you tear the shoe apart. Yeah. This guy was, he wore him half an hour and said, they're killing me. So, well. Yeah, it gives it a little bit. Uh -huh. Well, I knew how to do repairs too, because in the place that I used to work, you know, it was a full repair shop. Mm -hmm. I was my specialty out there was just uh, just uh, just to do the dark work. But I had the time, and I was young, so I decided to get involved into all of it. Yeah, most of my business is uh, repairs on shoes, and I do a, a lot of uh, orthopedic modifications, custom orthotics, but two. most of it is shoe repair. You know, we repair purses, we repair slippers, jackets, wheels on, on luggage, different things. Whatever it comes out, you know, we go for it. Bills. Also, the zippers when they break, like this one here, has a tear on the front. So we gotta put a piece of material to get it to close. No, oh, I'm b making some covers for a Louis Vuitton uh, purse. I mean, luggage, and uh, I'm still in the process of doing some of those. But it's taking some time. <laughs> this one here, we they need some covers, so. I'm in the process of, you know, manufacturing the cover for this one here. It's supposed to go like this. We have to put a cover in there with the zipper so they can throw it at the airlines so they can break them in. I did a few of these before, so this is like the fourth one. I have two, two more of these to do, and also working on the, this type of uh, luggage. So we do a lot of luggage, purses, handbags, zippers. The country change, and it's. A, I'm thinking about going back now. Really, it's a, it's a beautiful country. It before was capital murder of the world, worse than Afghanistan when they were in war, and some of it was in bad shape. But this new president came in and four years ago, and the first two years he couldn't do much because he has the Congress against him, but. Then they had elections and he won very bad, very, I mean, his new party got the majority on the assembly and now it's, a diff it's like day and night. It's, it's a different world. That, that's my goal now. I, I really, I went back to El Salvador. I stopped going to El Salvador for, last time I went to bury my dad and I didn't went back for like 23 years because of the gang members. It was very bad. You know, it, it was worse, worse than the war. In the war, we we'll still have fun. In the, during the next uh, gang members, no, there, there was no life for the people out there. So, 23 years, I didn't went back. Until about two years ago, I went and, and I start noticing, you know, it's a different world. Like four months after I came back, the government down there 
put a war against the guys and put them all in jail. You know, so it's it's a different world now. It's been, it actually it's safer than the United States. Mm -hmm. It's it's Canada. They say is the one that we're we're chasing. It's the safest country in Latin America. That that's the goal. My, that's my goal. Yeah, moving back and get to enjoy my country. <laughs>